All right, so we're just walking around out in the morning, early in the morning, the sun's just coming up. So we've still got heaps of shade around the truck. Um, the sun's just starting to come over the back here. So I'm just waiting for it to hit the roof because of the solar. Just turn these on. So here's the morning. 82, 84. It is uh, flickering, so it's getting tiny bits of charge coming through. It, it's um, flickering on and off, so it's just not enough to read amperage. That's probably why that temperature's gone up. But we'll keep an eye on it. We'll come out in another hour. This is going to be the key reason. Um, for these batteries and these systems where they're a hands-off system you don't have to plug it into power when you come home at the end of the day and the solar is just going to trickle feed it from like 7 7.30 in the morning if you're not parked under a tree like I am it'll be feeding your system from 7.30 to like 5.30 for the day so it's just constantly feed, 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 feed um, which is why the solar's on the truck. The solar's not new, it's been there for two years. Um, my battery system's been hooked up the same way for two years, feeding my 10 gallon soft wash, 24 volt soft wash pump. So it's not new to me, it's just the way we hooked it up because we had to direct wire the batteries instead of wiring them up um, with a 12 volt relay because we're drawing more current and because we're drawing more current we have to wire it directly to the super pump so that it was just a completely different setup um all new like dcd chargers and relays and all that type of stuff so we have worked out a relay that comes with solar input they're around eight hundred dollars they're quite they're much larger than the red arc ones um i'm going to price the red arc ones with the relay well what we've done here because they're smaller simpler and probably easier to put into a box and hide and then people can either choose which one they want um if they're going to get this system and have it as a touch free system so we've got that coming on so we'll come back out a little bit later and check up on that all right so we got a little bit more sunlight we are parked directly under a tree so if i was parked down in the car bays down there i know in the open flat we're getting half a half a amp drawing in to the panels at the present moment so we just drove up the road time is 8.30 in the morning so it's really low um, heat but we're with the truck running we're drawing 13 and a half amps just turn the truck off and we are two amps coming off the solar which is probably not too bad for the sun that's not like directly up in the air, so that is power getting fit into, feed, fed into these grids. So as you can see, it'll oscillate. I do got to clean the solar panels. I haven't cleaned them in about 18 months. Pretty dirty. So we'll get up here and give them a good clean. We did an oxidized roof the other day. So as you can see, they're pretty dirty. As you can see, we're just up here, just giving the solar panels a good bath. Give them a nice scrub, rinse, and a good flush out. I normally do this, normally do it after a pretty bad job where I've either got a lot of oxidization coming off the roof and hitting the car and that's what we we had the other day we were parked 
right beside a house and we'll clean a roof like mine where it's heavily oxidized. I'm gonna get up there today and pressure wash that because we've got solar going on the roof on Monday. So I've got to get up there and get the, all that washed. Getting these all cleaned up, a bit of maintenance. And once we got cleaned up, we'll park down there in the sun for a little bit. Um, and then we'll hook up the other solar and see the difference between two bays because that's a 300 watt panel which is a fold out portable 300 watt is um we were testing that compared to the rooftop panels which are two linked together which are 170 each so we were seeing which one performed better but they were both at the same consistency so we'll um switch them over and we'll go from there all right, so we're in full sun. Yeah, here. And then... Oh. Drawing in four amps each. So I don't know, that's probably split between the two. Um, but what we got over here is we got the other one. So we're going to hook up the extension lead and we'll hook that up in now. So it's just flickering backwards and forwards. It's jumping up from five to six. It's not staying on. Um, you can say eight hours to full if you're just running solar. It's charging off the battery. All right, so we come to the conclusion that we're running on about 200 watts or 100, half the panel, but 50% of the panel is running efficiently um, coming in. So we're not on full draw and we're running somewhere around four amps an hour on the draw. So... So we're running just on about nine amps per hour and that's getting spread over both batteries. So as you can see, it'd be three and a half hours to full if it was just solar running into the battery. So if you were running on an average day, your solar would input enough solar into the batteries to charge the batteries back up from that 80, 75% margin and then driving backwards and forwards to work would do the rest so now you have you have that completely untouchable system once you've set that up um, we'll run through the figures and the cost to set this up um, you won't have to plug it in anymore and that's exactly what I want I don't want to come home and run the lead across a sidewalk or try and back all the way up into the house or the garage to run a lead out to plug it and then I forget to unplug the lead and I drive out of the garage and rip it out of the socket and damage something. I want a completely untouchable system. So once I plug it in the first time, unless the solar goes down or the battery charge goes down, um, but you gotta remember, we've put a Red Arc DCD charger on that one, 24 volt, 24 volt output. Um, 20 amps these things have been tried and tested in Australia and they last like you get a good warranty with the new ones um, and the solar well I, I chose kick-ass because I have not been let down by their panels and I've been running their gear for the last eight years um, doing camping and pressure washing over the last three and a half and it's just uh, being reliable all the way to the end. Um, the only thing that had me reliable is the two deep cycles that I, I killed. But we did that on purpose to show that they, they're they not strong enough to run this type of system. Um, there's just too much power, too much punch in that pump. And it's just going to eat these batteries alive. So you've yeah. got to go. So look. what we're running is two independent 120 amp um, slim lines in there. We've got a big one over here, but this is only 12 volt. Um, 
I mainly bought this one. This unit is, it's a big 120, um, big 120 amp in there, which is the big old school batteries, but it's on a monitoring box. So we bought this one. So when we go camping, we can take this box out. What we're trying to do is we're talking to another company about a 24 volt battery bank. It'll be the same width as this one here and a little bit longer. And it's just two leads on top instead of all the wiring at the back there. So it's just a straight plug in 24 volt. Um, so we're talking to them at the moment about that. So we've got a lot of things. We have a lot of things on the move at the moment, um, planning, trying to work out best ways and cheapest ways of getting these systems to you guys so you don't have to think about too much. Um, plug and play. We're, we're even thinking about designing these boxes where if you want a large box, you can buy the large. We'll, you just say you want a large box, we'll buy it, we'll hook it up, we'll plumb it, we'll wire it and then we'll ship it straight down to you guys or wherever you are. So then all you gotta do is drop in your batteries. We'll get you the order of batteries offline, drop in your batteries, plug them all up, plug it all in and then away you go. Um, we'll have all the Anderson connections and all the batteries like, they'll be all dialed in. So you just go like positive, positive, ne negative, never. So it's we'll nice to do that. So that's what we're planning on doing. So it becomes a nice quick plug and play and then if your batteries go down later um but you got 10 year life on these 10 year warranty on these things like if it lasts 10 years just throw it out and buy a new one like seriously um so that's what we're trying to get organized so i am going to stop filming that was a little vlog that we wanted to run just for the solar